So what's harder than taking a big white tail buck during the rut? Filming yourself while you do it. Now that's hard. John Cooper knows that firsthand from his recent self film bow hunt in southern Illinois where he hunted a buck called DB that had recently shown up on his Moultrie camera. The great thing about hunting this time of year is scrapes. If you put a camera on a scrape, you're going to get a pretty good idea of all the bucks in your area. Last night I checked the cameras and saw a new face. So what I'm going to do is pull a stand off the food plot and set it up between the food plot, the bedding area, and where I got that picture. The weather's been absolutely miserable. Um, it's kind of stopping the movement. Any deer you see, they're not getting out into the fields until after dark. So one thing I decided to do was dive off into a little bit of thicker woods where it feels just a little bit cooler. A new face showed up on the scene too. He looks looks like he's got a double, double main beam. Hopefully he makes a mistake tonight. We'll see what happens. I named that buck DB last night. DB Cooper, double beam. I hope that footage is good enough because I was, I was blurry. Hopefully my footage wasn't. Let's get down and see what he looks like. Look at that. You don't see something like this every day. He got some junk going on the bases on the back side. It's, it's really special when you kill something on your own property, especially something as small as 27 acres. Just such a unique looking deer. John's willingness to make an adjustment from that food plot that he'd been consistently hunting to that wooded ravine below was definitely one of the keys to his success. A lot of times during the peak period of the rut, mature bucks will use their nose to check for hot does in food plots and crop fields while circling downwind while remaining in the safety of the wood line. Now John played this to his advantage and intercepted old DB as he circled the side of the food plot on a well-worn trail. And even better, he filmed it himself. Have you ever wondered how to self-video your own hunt? Well, here's some tips that'll help you do just that. Killing a big buck or any animal for that matter has its own set of challenges, but these days almost every hunter wants to video their next hunt. And that throws in a whole nother set of challenges. So what are some things that you can do to easily put your next hunt on video? First of all, there's a few things that it helps to have. The first thing you're gonna need is a camera, of course. Any type of video camera, it'll work. There's cameras made to fit almost every budget. Now you're also gonna need a camera arm. Camera arms come in various makes and sizes. These are great because they attach to the tree, hold your camera, and give you a full range of motion that's smooth and steady. What about attaching your camera to the arm, though? One of my favorite things to use is a fluid head. Mixed with a ball to flat base adapter, you can easily level your camera. A couple other things you may want but aren't necessities is some sort of a POV camera and a wireless mic or a shotgun mic. POVs are great to catch your reaction at all times on the hunt and the mic, it just helps get rid of all the wind noise that your on-camera mic may catch. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Also remember the best tree stands to use are ones like this one that have no armrest or railing around them. It leaves the entire space around you open so that your camera arm is free to swing in all directions. Now what about the setup? Attach the camera arm to the tree on the right side of your body while seated. You want to make sure that the camera arm can swing freely in all directions including above your lap. Secure the camera arm down and be sure to level it in all directions. Now go ahead and attach your fluid head and camera and if you have the ball adapter, go ahead and level that too. Notice that with the camera on the right side of your body, you can see the viewfinder at all times, whether you're seated or standing, which can be important for minimal movement when taking that shot. Even at full draw, you can see the viewfinder, and that can make the difference of getting that kill shot or totally missing it. 
The POV, I always like to put it a little high above me, looking down on me. They have a really wide angle of view, so they're not hard to aim. If you have the accessibility to it, get yourself a remote control of any sort. These also help minimize movement while in the tree stand. The last tip that I have, be sure to bring plenty of cards to hold your video and batteries. The worst thing that can happen is to have a full memory card or your battery die right in the middle of a kill shot. It's one thing to go back to hunting camp and share all your stories with all your buddies. But how awesome would it be to show them your hunt on video? Keep some of these things in mind when you video your next hunt. Hey, after seeing that, I think I might take a stab at self-filming my next hunt. And speaking of that, here's a couple people I'm sure you're going to recognize who are video experts in their own right. We're just going to show you the way that we normally will set up. This is our hunting stand or, you know, the, the shooter stand on right here. What we always like to do is always figure, okay, the platform of the second stand should be just above the seat of the hunting stand and not at a 90, but maybe like about 100 to 110 degrees off. And that's about exactly where we'll have it. On this one, probably maybe a little bit, a little bit more over just so that's not in your back. Make sure it's even on that. But that's the way we normally will set them up. 